cupcake girl, the cupcake girl. Do you know the cupcake girl who lives on Booksy Lane? Yes, we know the cupcake girl, the cupcake girl, the cupcake girl. Yes, we know the cupcake girl who lives on Booksy Lane. should we read today? Hmm, let's spin the magic wheel. Beauty and the Beast. Wiggle, snap, story time. Let's go. There was a girl named Belle Rose. Hi. <laughs> Belle lived in a small village with her father, one sister, and one brother. Her father was very nice, but her sister and brother, not so nice. I'm not sure why they were so mean. They just were. And they were always fighting, uh, taking things that didn't belong to them. So not cool. And making up ridiculous fibs. I didn't take your book, Belle. A ninja broke into the house and stole your book. But it was okay. As I said, my dad was the nicest dad ever in the history of daddom. <laughs> my dad had lots of ships that went all over the world selling stuff. But one day, it went all down the drain. <laughs> one very bad hurricane and my dad lost everything. It's okay, kids. We're still together and that's what matters. Yeah, family. One day, Please. Belle's dad found out that an old ship had drifted into the harbor. It has to be one of my ships, kids. I just know it. Yay! Presents! Yes, presents for everyone. What would you like? I want a pony and a new dress and a tiara. I want a new bike and a new dog. And you, Belle, what would you like? Just one red rose from the flower market. A rose for my Belle Rose. Cute! Boring. So basic. So off Belle's dad went, whistling a happy tune. La 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 la, everything's great. But when he got to the harbor, he saw that the mystery ship was just an old pirate ship with nothing but a couple of parrots <laughs> and a rusty old hook on board. He headed back home, whistling a sad tune. La 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 la, everything's not great. And then as if things weren't bad enough for poor old Belle's dad, it started to rain. Lord. Oh, hey, a castle. I bet it's nice and warm in there. Hello? Hello? Is anyone home? The castle was dark and very quiet. He slept like a baby all through the night, and when he woke, he found that someone had made him breakfast. Yummer! Hello? Hmm. Better be on my way. He was just about to leave the castle when he saw a perfect red rose. Just like the one Belle wanted. What do you think you're doing? Ah, nothing. I was just leaving. You come into my castle, sleep by my fire, eat my food, and now you steal from me? I'm so, so sorry. My daughter Belle wanted a red rose, and I saw this, and it's perfect. I'll make a deal with you. 
Okay. You may go and take this rose to your daughter. Okay. But she must return and work for me. No! It's either that or you stay here forever. But my kids, they won't know where I've gone. I, I can't stay. Then send me Belle. Belle's dad had left the castle with the rose, but he didn't know what to do. Could he really send his daughter to work for this beast? Surely not, but what could he do? I'll go back and I'll fight him. Stand back, beast. I'm here to defeat you. Uh-oh. Maybe not. He arrived home, still not sure what to do. Dad, I was so worried about you. Where's my bike? Where's my pony? Their dad explained that there would be no pony and no new bike. It's okay, Dad. I'm just glad you're home. Oh, Belle, I did bring you a rose. It's lovely. Did you get it at the market? It's way prettier than usual. Interesting story, actually. He explained the whole beast situation. When he was done, Belle and her siblings looked like this. I'm not going to work for a stinky beast. Me either. No way. Gross. Of course not. We'll figure this out. I'll go. Great, that settles it. See ya, Belle. Belle, no, you can't. If I don't go, he'll come find you. And then what? I'll go, I'll work, and then I'll come home. No big deal. And so it was settled. Belle would go to the beast. I like that girl. Hello. Hello. Mr. Uh, sir? Oh, dinner is at seven. Hmm. Okay, so like, am I supposed to cook dinner? Is that my job? I guess I better find the kitchen. But when she found the kitchen, she saw that someone had already begun dinner. It smells good. So maybe I'm to set the table. But in the dining room, the table had already been set. Well, I guess I'll just sit here and wait for dinner. Whoa, how'd the food get in here? I didn't see anyone bring it in. Now where's that beast? I'm hungry. Okay, that's it. I'm digging in. I guess I'm eating alone. <laughs> then Belle realized that she was not alone at all. What? Magic. So fun! So cool. But wait, if this place has magic invisible servants, then what's my job? And where's that beast? Any answers for me, invisible butler man? Alrighty then, <laughs> I think I'll take a tour of the grounds. Belle thought the castle was the most beautiful place she had ever seen, but her favorite part was the garden. <sighs> These are the most perfect roses in the whole world. I wonder if the beast enters them into flower shows. <laughs> He'd win for sure. <laughs> I better not touch them though. That's what got me into this mess. Apparently the beast really likes his flowers. You can touch them. Ah! Don't be scared. Oh. Sorry, you just startled me. Are you, um, the... The beast? Yes. Oh. Come out of the shadow so I can see you. Okay, but I have to warn you. I'm super scary. It's okay. I'm super brave. <laughs> ah! Uh, sorry. I was, um, I was just screaming at something else. I thought I saw a bat. It's okay. I know what I look like. Oh. Let's try this again. I'm Belle. Hi. <laughs> I'm the beast. Is that your real name? No, my real name is Sam. Oh, well, hi, Sam. I'll have Gustav show you a room. Good night, Belle. Has the invisible guy been here the whole time? Uh, boy, this is going to take some getting used to. Belle followed invisible Gustav to her new room. It was pretty amazing. This is amazing. Belle's bedroom had a huge bed with like a hundred little fancy pillows and only about a thousand books. Princess and the Pea, nice. Cinderella, one of my faves. Sleeping Beauty, a classic, but I'd like it better if the main character were awake more. She snoozes through like the whole book. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go to bed now. See you in the morning. I mean, not see you, you know what I mean. I should write my dad a letter before bed. <laughs> He'll wanna know how things are going. Dear Dad, what a day. The beast is not at all what I expected. I thought he'd be all growly and snarly and mean, but so far he seems pretty nice. The food here is very good. <laughs> oh, and get this, all the butlers and maids are invisible. Any
Anyway, I'm sure you're worried about me, but I'm really doing okay. Love always, Belle. <laughs> Belle was right. Her dad was very worried about her. It was hard for him to have his sweet daughter so far away and living with a scary beast, no less. Poor Belle. I just hope she's okay. Aww. I'm sure she's fine. So she lives with a scary monster, so what? Yeah, no big deal, Dad. The next day, Belle woke bright and early, excited <sighs> to start her new job. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, Sam, what's on the agenda for today? Stocks, bonds, monthly reports, number crunching? I was thinking we'd just go for a hot air balloon ride. A hot air balloon ride? Yeah, that sounds like fun, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> let's go. Belle and the Beast spent their first full day together flying around in a hot air balloon, just talking and getting to know each other. Well, mostly Belle talked. So yeah, my brother and sister are kind of annoying, but they're family, what are you gonna do? <laughs> do you have brothers and sisters? No. Do you have parents? No. Any family at all? No. Oh, that's so sad. Family's very important, at least you have your health. <laughs> and a castle. <laughs> your hair is also very nice. Do you use conditioner? I use coconut oil in my hair sometimes. It's very moisturizing and it smells delish. Do you have any coconut oil? It's very nutritious. What in the heck is that? It's a hot air balloon, you dingbot. Yeah. But what about a furry dude riding in it? Say, that looks like a monster. I don't like monsters. What was that? Someone shot at our balloon. Oh no! Ah, we're going down! Ah. Hold on, Belle! <laughs> there they are. Get him! Belle, stand back! Alright, doggy, say. I'm not a dog. He can talk? Back up now or we'll shoot. That was so scary. Are you okay? I'm fine. Aw, look, you scratched your paw. It's okay. I'm fine. Yeesh, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're walking back then? Yeah. Belle and the Beast walked back toward the castle. Belle had a feeling that the Beast was a little embarrassed. Gee, <laughs> nothing like being shot out of the sky by a couple of huntsmen to ruin your day, huh? <laughs> I'm just glad it's over. But unfortunately, it wasn't over. The hunters had run back to their hunting lodge. I'm telling you, he's at least 10 feet tall. And hairy all over. And he had fangs. Huge fangs and claws. Huge claws. He looked like he was half wolf, half bear. But this guy was me. Yeah, and he had a lady with him. We have to go back and save a lady. Beast and Belle were back at the castle, safe and sound for now. <sighs> Now, let's get your paw bandaged. Turns out the beast was a big baby when it came to boo-boos. There, all better. <laughs> and you only cried a little. I did not cry. Sure, okay. I didn't. You know what would be nice right now? Hot cocoa. Gustav, could you make us some hot cocoa? Ooh, with the tiny marshmallows on top, please. With tiny marshmallows, please, Gustav. Cheers, Belle. Cheers, Sam. <laughs> Love it. It was cozy and peaceful in the castle. Deep in the woods, the hunters were on the prowl. They were acting big and tough and saying what they were going to do to the beast when they found him. I'm going to tie him up and I'm going to sell him to the zoo. I'm going to feed him to my pet alligator. You have a pet alligator? No, but that'd be cool, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. They were big and brave, weren't they? Wait. I'll hear something. <laughs> Yes, very brave indeed. The next morning, Belle decided she would do something nice for the beast to say thanks for saving her from the hunters. Good morning! Huh? Breakfast in bed. I made pancakes. Oh, I like the little smiley face. Aww. You should smile more. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> and Belle did. She made it her top priority to make the beast's castle a cheerful place. Ooh. To the left. A little more. Go back to the right. Perfect. He brought home a pet kitten, which wasn't so great at first. But they got used to each other. I think I'll name him Scruffles. And she made the beast laugh with her hilarious impressions of Gustav. Huh? Gustav. 
Gotcha! It was me the whole time! I just pulled this string! <laughs> Belle and Sam's favorite thing to do together was just sit by the fire and read. It was so peaceful and cozy. But it was also during these quiet moments that Belle thought about her dad and how much she missed him. <sighs> you all right? Yeah. Good. But things weren't so good back at Belle's house. Please, go to Belle and tell her to come home. I must see her. I'm, I'm not, not going. I'm not going. Jinx. Jinx. Double, Double jinx. jinx. Let's flip for it. Heads. It's tails. Sorry. Ugh. Belle. I can't thank you enough. For what? <laughs> Scruffles? Yeah, he's pretty cute. <laughs> no, I mean, thank you for everything. You just make everything nice. Well, you're welcome. And thank you. <laughs> I thought I was gonna hate it here, no offense. <laughs> I, I just, well, you know, but I really do like it. I mean it. What happened here? I mean, you live out here all alone, you have invisible butlers and maids, and you're, um, different. I'm cursed, Belle. Okay, you're being dramatic. I don't want to talk about it. <coughs> I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about it. Good night. Aww. Okay. What do you think, Scruffles? Think we can break the spell? <laughs> the next day, Belle's brother set out for the Beast Castle. I hate this. I'm hungry. Oh, a hunting lodge? I bet they have snacks. Belle's brother was also quite nosy, so he immediately began eavesdropping. I'm telling you, the beast was this tall. And we're gonna find him one of these days. Uh-oh! Back to his journey through the dark, scary woods. No trespassing, ever. Beware of beast. Oh, this must be it. What? This place is huge. I didn't know the beast was rich. Cool. Can I help you? Ah! <laughs> what are you doing here? Dad's sick. He wants you to come home. Well, you can't go now. It's way too late. You're right. We'll go in the morning. Bill's brother was actually pretty excited to stay a night at the Beast's castle. You know, now that he knew he was rich. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too. Honest? Yes. Okay, you'll miss each other. Blah, blah, blah. Boring. The next morning, the Beast was even sadder. Finally, it was time to go. Giddy up. Bye, Sam. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't doing so great. Belle, on the other hand, was so happy to see her dad again. Dad! Oh, I miss you so much! While Belle had missed her dad, she realized she hadn't really missed her siblings at all. Uh, Belle, we didn't think you were coming back, so we put all your stuff in storage. What's wrong with you? You look all blah. Have you been crying because you miss your hairy beast friend? Belle has a boyfriend. Belle has a boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend. He's just my friend. You should marry him. He is rich. He's rich? OMG, Wiz. He's so rich. Uber rich. Like, he probably has a gazillion dollars. Suddenly, Belle's brother remembered something. That's it. What? When I was looking for the beast castle to bring back Belle, I stopped in a hunting lodge. Ew. Anyway, I overheard these hunter guys talking about finding and capturing a beast. So? Well, we could tell them where he is, and then we can take all his rich stuff. The two started plotting their super mean, some might even say evil, scheme. Can we help you, Sonny? You've been looking for a beast? I know where he is. Gustav, bring me more herbal tea and ice cream. <laughs> Belle, she's come back. Gustav, make that one ice cream two spoons. Belle, I'm so glad you... Watch ah! out! Uh, I mean... Roar! There he is! Get him! <gasps> Something's wrong. I can feel it. Sam's in trouble. Sam who? The beast! Oh, yeah. The hunters are capturing him so we can take all his rich stuff. I have to go save Sam. Okay, night-night. Belle had never gone on a rescue mission before, but she bravely went out into the night to save her best friend. Good thing I still have Sam's carriage. Giddy up, horsey! Back at the Beast Castle, the hunters had tied up Sam. Normally, he would have fought back, but he was so brokenhearted that he could barely lift a paw. <laughs> Belle! What? 
Belle's my sister. You'll never see her again, you mongrel. But he would see Belle again because there she was. Our girl had a plan. Now, what are we gonna do with the beast? I'll say we put him in prison. I say we put him in the zoo. I say you let him go! Now! Oh yeah? What are you gonna do? This! Suddenly, one of the hunters was swept off his feet into the air, and then he landed on his tissue. Ow! Oh, huh? Oh, I'm getting pinched by something. Ouch! Oh, that's just Gustav. Gustav? Where? Ouch, make him stop! Oh, stop! Ow! Sam, are you okay? You came back. I promised I would. Oh. You're hurt. Is that a tear? What the what? I'm back! Woohoo! I was cursed by a witch a long, long time ago. A witch? I was mean to her first. She was hungry and cold, and I wouldn't help her. So she turned me into a beast, made all of my staff invisible and mute, cursing me to a life of loneliness. Classic witch curse. I had given up all hope, and then you came along. Your friendship saved me. Your tears must have proved how much you care. Oh, Belle. Oh, Sam. Ah, oh, so mushy. Oh, can it, Gustav? I forgot how sassy he is. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi there, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Frankenstein Makes a Monster. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's 10. <laughs> 10 and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. One time, he filled all my shoes with slime! Ew! Victor! And then one time, he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck! Ah! Victor! So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored! I want to make something. Something big, something bad, something epic. I know! Today I'm gonna create a monster! Uh-oh! Victor went down to his laboratory, aka our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise, forgive me? <laughs> I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet. But don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. 
Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, glued, fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life! It's alive! Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's, it's, it's alive! <laughs> yes, and now we will unleash chaos onto the world. <laughs> oh, are you hungry? Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But... Oh, no buts. But there was a but. A big one. A real, live monster was on the loose. But really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. Oh, sad. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. <laughs> the monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left. But then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Oh, not cool. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Ah. Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah. Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, good, thanks. All right, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? Yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day from people like this gentleman. I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. Oh, no. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah! Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! 
I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse. Not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. <laughs> Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, <laughs> Right Foot Blue. Uh. Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh. Then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies. And now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Stop! Stop! Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh -uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. Bye. Okay. Good night. Phew. That was close. <sighs> we can't keep him here. There's no way Mom and Dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. <laughs> you seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not going to wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> OK, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course. Uh -huh. Perfect. Let's go. <laughs> so we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Watch out! Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some other projectiles. Or we could just catch a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I uh, said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. <laughs> but don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. <laughs> Oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Uh. Come on, Gran. Time for bed. Uh. Yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. 
but the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha, I'll get ya. But he missed. Phew. But then it landed. Ah, hey, you stuck me. And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. Ah. <laughs> it was chaos. Finally. We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know. Just one more stop. Come on, guys. Let's go to Professor Weirdly's. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep. Awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. <laughs> it was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. The end. Aw, so the monster got to live happily ever after. It would be so cool to have a monster going to your school, don't you think? Thanks for coming to Storytime. Can't wait to read more stories with you at Storytime soon. Bye. Today, we're reading Tricky Jack and the Wicked Witch. Wiggle, snap, story time! Tricky Jack was known as the biggest prankster in town. He was always causing trouble, like drawing on the walls, jumping in the public pool, and tying people's shoes together. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town! can't be right! Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town! It's because I'm a witch! That's what we do! It's in the job description! I'm gonna prove I'm the trickiest one there is! Later that day, Jack was walking on the trail back home when a mysterious figure approached him. Whoa! What's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. There is one way to stop the witch, but it won't work for too long. Go on. 
it's autumn, and the one thing that the witch hates more than anything is the fall harvest. She especially hates root vegetables like pumpkin, squash, potatoes, turnips. She hates potatoes? You mean she doesn't even like french fries? Not one bit. She doesn't even like sweet potato fries. My point is, if you aren't going to be good, you can at least try and stop her with that. But she'll be back. Whatever. I'll be fine. Well, just in case, I will give you this to ward off the witch, should she come our way. Ooh. Ew, what's this? It's a turnip. You know, a gourd, a root vegetable, grows in the ground, sometimes put it on salads. Have you ever eaten anything healthy, ever? The only food I eat is candy, french fries, chocolate, and candy. Use it to keep the witch away, but remember, she'll never truly leave you alone until you give up your prankster ways and become a good contributor to society. Save the spiel, Jack Ow. Jack headed home, and once again, as Jack got close to his house, he noticed something else on the path in front of him. Please, young man, can you help me up? Hmm, let me think about it. Psych! You just made a big mistake, young Jack. Where is I, the tricky witch? <laughs> I've heard you think you're the trickiest lady in town. That I am. I'm the tricky witch. It's in my name. Oh, yeah? Well, what kind of tricks do you do? Lots of tricks. I can turn butter into mud. That's nothing. I bet you can't even make candy appear out of thin air. Uh, of course I can. Ooh! Hey, I didn't make that candy for you. Well, I'm the one that's eating it, so it's mine now. Hmm. You're trickier than I thought. Tell you what, let's do a challenge. Challenge, you're on. You say you like candy? Well, let's go around from house to house looking for some and see who can get the most. Whoever has the most wins. Oh, I'm sure I'll win this one. I'm good at taking candy, but how about we raise the stakes a little bit? Hmm. If I win, I get to keep all the candy you found. If you win, you get to keep all my candy. Sounds like a deal. Oh, too slow. Okay, let's begin. On your mark, get set. Hey, I didn't say go yet, you cheater. But Jack was already collecting as much candy as he could find. He found caramel sweets in an old lady's purse, took lollipops from little children, <laughs> and even went directly to the source, the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate sandwich cookies. The witch was using her magic to make more candy. She really was a tricky witch. See, there's no way I didn't win this challenge. <laughs> and Jack met the tricky witch to count up. It was pretty clear who'd won. Ha, it looks like I win. I'm the trickiest one of all. Wow, you sure are. I guess a bet's a bet. Here, take all my candy. Yes, let's count up how much more candy I have now that I have yours too. One, two, three, four. Ah, a root vegetable. Ah, I'm disappearing. He had done it. Jack had tricked the witch. And now you're banished. All of this candy is mine. I may be banished for now, but you'll bet I'll be back. Nobody tricks me and gets away with it. In one year, I will return and get revenge. Well, I'm glad that problem has gone away and will never bother me again. But just when Jack thought all his problems were solved, a familiar face appeared in front of him. What do you want? I told you, Jack, the witch will be back and she will keep coming back again and again until she beats you. You cannot trick her forever. When her banishment ends in one year, she will be smarter and trickier than ever before. Well, so will I. That is not something to be proud of, Jack. If you keep playing tricks, you will never be free of her. She will bother you forever and ever. And if she wins, you will be her prisoner. Where would she take me? to where she came from, the realm of darkness, a world of ghosts and darkness and evil witches. So I'll just have to keep tricking her forever. That's fine by me. I'll never give up my tricky ways. You say that now, but I'm warning you, a life of trickery and rule breaking is one you will regret. Oh yeah? Wanna bet? 
We just went over this. Ugh. Jack was very pleased with himself. He had outsmarted an evil witch, and she wouldn't be back for another year, which for Jack felt like a long, long time. And so Jack kept pulling his pranks. Soon fall turned into winter. Woohoo! And winter turned into spring. <laughs> My allergies! <laughs> Does anybody have a tissue? I do. Did you pour pepper on this tissue? Yes. Yes, I did. And spring turned into summer. Protect yourself from the sun. Buy my sunscreen. Your sunscreen doesn't work. My whole family is burned. <laughs> I'm hilarious. And winter turned back into fall. Surprise! This is unpleasant. Soon it was October 31st yet again, exactly one year since Jack had last seen the Tricky Witch. Jack woke up and knew that the witch was going to be coming for him. Oh boy, October 31st, the day the witch comes back. I bet I'll trick her again. Jack was a little nervous. What if the witch beat him? As he strolled past the town's pumpkin patch. Hello Jack, it's me, the Tricky Witch. I'm back. And for my revenge. You sure can try. You may have tricked me last time, but this time I'll make sure you don't have anything you can use to banish me. Empty your pockets. Hmm. Perhaps we should do a classic challenge scenario. How about a race? A race? I love racing. I'm the fastest person in the world. Well, I'm a witch. I can move super fast. Hmm, this road isn't very long. How about instead of racing on foot, let's have a climbing contest. That way, I can keep an eye on you so you don't cheat. And same to you! You cheated last time! So did you! And I still won! Enough! A climbing race it shall be. What should we climb? How about the old patch tree? Whoever gets the top first wins. Deal! Oh, <laughs> too <laughs> slow! <laughs> Jack, this is your last chance. You don't have to challenge her. The only way to truly win is to leave her alone. Jack thought it over, but deep down, he already knew what he was going to do. Jack was a trickster through and through, and there was no way he was backing down from the witch's challenge. Don't worry, angel food cake. I got this. At the base of the tree, Jack and the witch prepared themselves for the climb. Okay, I'll count down. On your mark? Get set, go! And so the tricky witch started climbing as fast as she could. She climbed higher and higher and higher. So high that she couldn't even see Jack. She couldn't believe it. It looked like she was winning. But where was Jack? He was running away? Jack ran as fast as he could to the pumpkin patch nearby and started picking all the pumpkins he could. Big pumpkins, tiny pumpkins, anything he could. Then he raced back to the tree and started placing the pumpkins at the bottom. Soon there was a whole field of pumpkins at the bottom of the tree. It didn't take long for the witch to realize that Jack hadn't followed her in the race. Hey, what's going on down there? Looks like you've won again. The witch slowly climbed back down the tree but stayed at the bottom branch as the truth hit her. There was no way for her to get down without hitting one of the pumpkins. Oh, a root vegetable! No! What do you have to say for yourself, witch? Uh, darn it! There's no way for me to get down without being banished again! I have a new idea. What's that? You and I will make a deal. You will never bother me again for as long as I exist. You will never take me to your home with darkness and ghosts and stuff. And what do I get in return? I'll move these pumpkins away so you can get down. The tricky witch considered Jack's words. Okay, deal. If you move the pumpkins, I will never be able to bother you, and you'll never be allowed to enter the realm of darkness. Deal. You have no idea, do you? About what? Not every deal is as great as it seems. Ooh. Sure, whatever. Bye, witch. You'll never bother me again. And as promised, the witch never bothered Jack again. Jack lived the rest of his life pranking people, pulling tricks, and being a troublemaker. He did so until he was a very old man, living alone and friendless. And soon Jack's life was done. Hello, angel food cake. I'm ready for you to take me to my next life. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't. 
What do you mean? You weren't a good person. You spent your whole life playing tricks on people. What? Your spirit will stay in this realm and for all of eternity and you'll never be allowed to leave. Well, that's fine. I can still play pranks and stuff. Well, actually... Psych. You're a ghost, Jack. And in that moment, Jack realized the gravity of what he'd done. He had spent his whole life finding joy in hurting other people. And now, there were consequences. But, but I'll change. I'll be good. I'll do good deeds. It's too late. I gave you the chance to change your ways and do good deeds when you were young. But changing your mind just because you know there are consequences isn't enough. No one should be a good person because they have to be, but because they want to be. So what do I do now? I guess that's up to you. Jack was left to wonder about everything he did. Were all the tricks worth it? In exchange for a lifetime of fun, he now had to spend eternity trapped on Earth. This is what I get for not learning my lesson. And so Jack spent the rest of eternity wandering the streets watching. He's been known to prank other tricksters like he once was so that they may not make the same mistakes. Boo! Ah! As time passed and Jack continued to haunt the town, his story was passed down from generation to generation. Everyone knew the story of Tricky Jack and how he was trapped on Earth forever. Afraid that he would haunt them, the townspeople treated October 31st as a special day to keep tricksters away. Families would put out candy so that children could enjoy sweets freely instead of taking them like Jack did. And they also put out pumpkins to keep the Tricky Witch away. The lit pumpkins were named Jack-o'-lanterns in Jack's honor, like the lantern he held. This special day soon came to be known as Halloween, which we still celebrate today. The end. Wow, so that's where jack-o'-lanterns come from. So cool. Thanks for coming to Storytime. Drew and his friends are dressed to thrill. Awesome! Things were getting kind of fun and spooky at Cool School. Everybody was hanging up decorations and carving pumpkins. And most importantly, we got ready for the costume contest. Ooh, let's do something as a group! We've totally got to win this year! What should we do? Let's not be monsters! I don't want to be scared! What if you're the monster, Robbie? Then you won't be scared of any of us. As long as I don't look in a mirror, that could work. You can be Frankenstein's monster. I'll be Dr. Frankenstein. Nikki, you can be Igor. I'll be the Bride of Frankenstein. Let's get started drawing and painting these costumes. Let's do it. Meanwhile, Cruel School was also getting ready. Although they always, always look kind of spooky. I want us to do vampire costumes. I think we should be werewolves. No, we should be zombies. What about unicorns? They're so pretty. The more time we spend arguing, the less time we have to make these costumes. Ugh, as much as I hate to say it, Ray is right. We need to just pick one. Fine, we could be vampires, but only if I get to I be- I get to be Dracula. Dibs, I called it. No fair. Too bad. I'll be Dracula, and you can all be my vampire bat sidekicks. Can Dracula have a unicorn sidekick too? No unicorns, Timmy. Wait, Ella, you need one more thing. Perfect. And now it's time for our monster. Nice job. How do I look? Great, want me to draw a mirror? No, 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 I trust you. Now it's time to work on our act. Do you guys know how to sing Putting on the Ritz? Meanwhile, the Cruel School gang was getting dressed in their costumes, but something wasn't right with Ray. 
Are you okay, Ray? You seem tired. I'm fine. Somebody help me put on my cape. I can barely move my arms with these wings tied to them. It's driving me batty. This was not a good idea. Finally, it was a night of the big costume party. Dean Mean, are you supposed to be a kitty cat? No, I'm a lion. The costume shop was sold out of manes and fangs, okay? All right, everyone, settle down. It's time to start the show. First up, the kindergartners. Oh. Ah, I can't help it. They're too cute. I have to give them a 9 out of 10. I told you guys we should have been unicorns. So the costume contest continued. There were mummies and wizards. And nobody was quite sure what Frankie was dressed as. But then it was time for Drew and his friends. Ooh. Welcome to my lab. I'll just draw some switches. Igor, flip the switch. It's alive! Ah, Frankenstein! Actually, Frankenstein was the name of the doctor, not the monster. Oh, I didn't know that. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! Great special effects. Excellent craftsmanship. Actually, a little scary. 10 out of 10. Great job, guys. Let's take a selfie. Look how great we look. Yeah, I didn't want to see myself. I'm a monster. Ah. And now it's time for Ray and friends from Cruel School. This better be good. I thought we were just making ghost sounds. This is terrible. Where's your Dracula? Where's Ray? I don't know. He just disappeared. Ugh, just keep flapping those wings. Sorry, kids. You're missing your star. That means the winner is... Drew and Friends from Cool School. Yeah! Aw, thanks, everybody. Sorry if anyone got scared. Especially me. What happened out there? Ray disappeared right before the show. So lame. Grr, when I find him, he's getting detention for the rest of the year. Scratch that, the rest of every year. Hey guys, is Ray all right? Who cares? We lost because of him. He's still your friend. You should be worried if he's missing. Whatever, I'm going home to eat candy and feel better. Well, I want to make sure he's okay. I'm gonna look for him. Ray, are you around here? Hmm. Ray, wake up! <gasps> Where am I? You fell asleep in this broom closet. You missed the whole costume contest. Oh man, I'm just so tired. I haven't been sleeping all week. I've been too scared. Why? What are you scared of? I can't tell you. You'll make fun of me. How about this? I'll tell you something that I'm scared of, and you can tell me what you're scared of. We'll say it at the same time. Deal? Okay. One, two, three. There's a monster orange in Orange juice. Room. Wait, what? You're afraid of orange juice? I hate the pulp. It just tastes so weird. But hold on. You think there's a monster in your room? Yeah. Every night when I'm trying to fall asleep, I start hearing footsteps. It's so scary. I haven't slept in days. Okay, I have an idea. I'll come over to your house for a sleepover tonight. If there's a monster in your room, we'll catch it. Really? You would help me? Sure, let's catch that monster. <clears throat> let's see what happens next. Okay, Drew, we're almost there. Now don't get into any trouble. That Ray Blank can be a bad influence. Don't worry, Mom. We're just gonna play some games, watch some TV. We are definitely not trying to capture a monster in the middle of the night. What? Nothing. Thanks for letting my friend Drew have a sleepover tonight. Of course, Ray. Now remember that Drew Bendis can be a good influence, so don't learn anything nice from him. You're supposed to be a bad guy. Don't worry. I promise I won't learn to be nice. He's here! Hi, Mrs. Bendis. Hi, Ray. Hope you boys have fun tonight. Ew, Mom, you're embarrassing me. 
That's part of my job. Now I'll pick you up tomorrow. I love you. Whoa, Ray, your house is pretty cool. Bad guys don't have houses. We have lairs. Nice to meet you, Mr. Blank. Please, call me Mel. Dinner time, everyone. Uh-oh, since you're evil, do you eat gross things for dinner? I don't want to eat bugs. Here you go, Drew. Oh, spaghetti. That's good. Yep, I stole it from a kid in the park. Did he cry? Sure did. <laughs> Come on, Drew. Let's eat up so we can catch that monster. What? Nothing. Okay, Ray, tell me exactly what's been going on. I always like to have a glass of milk next to my bed before I go to sleep. But every night, after the lights go out, I hear footsteps. So I hide under the covers. Then when I wake up in the morning, the glass of milk is empty. It's a monster, I just know it. Hmm, that's weird. But this time, we'll be ready. Looks like we're out of milk. Oh well, this will have to do. Ah, orange juice! Get that away from me! Oh yeah, I forgot, you're afraid of orange juice. The pulp just tastes so weird, all right? Well, too bad, we're both facing our fears tonight. Let's go. Okay, fine, let's be brave. Drew took out his mighty penultimate and turned into the stupendous Drupendous. Here's the plan, I'll draw a decoy in your bed. Then we'll hide behind that junk and see what happens. Is that what you think I look like? It doesn't have to look perfect. Let's get this under your covers. Then turn off the lights. And now we'll keep watch. You've really got to clean your room, Ray. Shh. Any minute now, I promise. Ray, it's been a while. Are you sure something's going to happen? Look, the closet door. A monster. I told you. Okay, you've got this. Time for a big scare. But first, a glass of milk. <laughs> Orange juice with pulp? Ah! Now! Gotcha! Ah! I'm scared! Wait, you're scared? But you're a monster! I know, but I'm not scary enough. Yeah, you do look kind of cute. Cute? Oh no, I'm a failure. What do you mean? I'm just a kid in monster school. I've got to scare a certain number of people to earn my stripes. You know, because monsters with stripes are always scarier. Have you been drinking my milk every night? Yeah, my mom says that milk makes you big and strong. I'm tiny and cuddly, so I thought some milk would help. Listen to my roar. See, not scary at all. So you're just a kid like us? Doing well in school is tough. I get it. And you just want to grow up. Here, I'll draw some milk for you. Gee, thanks. Now I just need to find somebody to scare so I can get a good grade. If I fail another scaring test, I could get detention. You get detention too? I know what that's like. Okay. I've got somebody who could really use a good scare. Oh, Mama, I hope you're proud of me. I'm trying so hard to be a good dean, and I just want Ms. Booksy to respect me. Here goes nothing. Ah, monster! Yes! Earn my stripes! It worked! More of the story, kids. Don't be scared of monsters. They probably just want some milk. Oh, and when it comes to orange juice, pulp isn't so bad. It's really not. <laughs>